What are we doing here, Deb? Why are we in the car? Oh, we're going to get a boat. Why? <laughs> because when in Arkansas it didn't work out. <laughs> because it's there? I don't know. I I, I gotta There's stop asking boat, myself this a question. Boat was calling your name. People ask me, people Greg. ask me, people ask me, so why are you getting a boat? I go, uh Save me, Greg, save uh, me. Because I don't have enough to do, but I do. I I don't know. I don't have a good answer. Okay. When I decided to pass on the Compact 23 in Arkansas, it left me in a bit of a bind. I didn't really want to put the time and money into fixing a boat trailer that I didn't have a use for, but I also didn't want to sell it just to break even or take a loss unless I absolutely had to. I spent some time poking around on Craigslist and came across a listing for a very economical Seaward 24 located about an hour away. Typically, when you find a really good deal on Craigslist, it's gone by the time you're able to get in touch with the seller, so when it was still available, I dropped everything and drove up to meet the owner. It turned out that he had recently moved out of a neighborhood with a community dock, and even though the new owner agreed to let him continue to use his slip through the winter, the HOA was forcing him to vacate the slip immediately. The market for a sailboat without a trailer, in the middle of January, isn't a large one, and while there had been a lot of interest, no one had the capability of transporting the boat or was close enough to sail at home. After a phone call to the HOA president, we shook hands on an agreement to move the boat at the end of the month, kicking off two weeks of frantic trailer repairs and planning for a closer, if no less intense, boat retrieval mission. Thus, the last day of January found us taking ownership of a boat we never sailed, with an engine we'd never run, to sail several miles upriver to the nearest boat ramp. Once there, we loaded on a trailer that I'd modified by taking measurements from pictures I'd found online. The boat was mine before we left the slip, so once we started there was no turning back. We were either coming back with the boat on the trailer, or spending the next week sailing 180 miles down the Chesapeake Bay and up the Potomac to get home. Just as soon as I could figure out which way upriver was. Just updated. Blind, blind. Look, 
with an engine with a wonky idle, and, finally, pointed in the right direction, we set out upriver. Need no stinking engine. The plan to get the boat on the trailer was to lower the bunks and balance the boat on the flat of the shoal draft keel until we got it up on level ground. Since it was my adventure, I drew the short straw to get in the water to load and secure everything. At 43 degrees, it was unbelievably cold. Even wearing waders, you could feel the cold seeping up your legs. several trips in and out of the water until we got everything adjusted and the boat positioned how we wanted. The biggest problem was getting the bow of the boat high enough that it didn't settle backwards as the weight came down onto the trailer.
With the boat finally out of the water, we were able to set the bunks for a final time, strip the rigging, and lower the mast. Or, drop the mast. It ended up being kind of a mix of the two. With everything loaded up, tied down, and secured, we hit the road for the trek through rush hour traffic back home. Ten minutes in, I realized that when we stopped for gas that morning, we took out the left tail light. Again.
So it's the next morning. We got the boat home after dark last night. Now, yesterday was a really long day. Everything, uh, everything took longer than I thought it was going to. And it just, it just kept going on and on. And I was watching the clock get later and later. And I had a place I had to be at, the, at that night for the kids. So that just ended up being really stressful. But we got the boat back. And, and in the end, everything, everything really went well. Um, it, it took a long time and, and we had to go back and redo a lot of things, but nothing really went wrong. And just, <laughs> mostly I'm just tired. I, did, I forgot to wear gloves yesterday. And like every, I'm just, my whole hand is just covered in teeny tiny little cuts and, and I'm sore and everything hurts. And the emotional letdown because I've spaced these videos out a little bit, but that, that last video, the first video I posted about working on the trailer in real time was only about a week and a half, a half ago. And I've just been working continuously because I, there was a, a expiration date on this boat where it had mo had to move so I am exhausted but there's a boat on a trailer next to my house <coughs> mission accomplished so the next video we'll go over more about the boat we'll take a little tour but everything with the trailer really worked out as, as well as could be expected it was challenging not knowing what the configuration needed to be so we spent a lot of time going back and forth with that but yeah so i just just got back from handing the keys in for the truck and i'm gonna go sit down for, for a little bit and watch some cartoons with my kids because it's a saturday morning Because I don't have enough to do, but I do. I I don't know. I don't have a good answer. There's stuff on the bottom that needs to be cleaned. That's the boat talking, not okay. me. I'm gonna have to edit. So. <laughs> That's where we dumped the coffee. I just dumped coffee. <laughs> <laughs>